Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan, business administrator here at FaithBridge, and I'm joined uh, by TA, Timothy Atik, who just brought us a great message on conformity. Thanks for being here, TA. You bet. Thanks for having me. Well, we had a couple of questions come in this afternoon, so let's go ahead and get cracking on those. The first was uh, asking if you can suggest any good books for someone, especially a young adult, uh, that needs to work on conforming to be like Christ. So this person is drawing near to, looks like high school graduation. Okay. They're seeking purpose in their life. Any good books to help them become more like Christ sure. that you'd suggest? Well, that's a, that's a really pivotal time in life. Um, I'll encourage a few different books that aren't necessarily just about conforming to the image of Christ, but by reading them, they will encourage you to pursue Jesus in different areas of life, which mm -hmm. would lead to conforming to the image of sure. Christ. And so uh, probably my favorite book of all time is called The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozier. It's just a book that will ignite your passion for Jesus, which mm. is great, and I encourage that. Um, a really practical book that I think deals a lot with just becoming more like Jesus is a book called Crazy Love by Francis Chan. Um, there's also a book called Radical by David Platt. Both of those will give a lot of, um, a lot of motivation towards becoming more and more like Jesus. Um, zeroing in on some specific issues, in particular um, dating and romantic relationships, which stepping into college becomes such a huge component mm -hmm. of students' lives. Mm -hmm. I would highly encourage Ben Stewart's book, Single, Dating, Engaged, Married. It's probably, in my opinion, the best resource out on the market right now, especially for college students mm -hmm. in that area. Um, and then particularly on the area of just needing people's approval, which we established today, Conformity Feeds on the Need for Approval. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's two books, um, The Search for Significance, which I forgot the author's name at this moment. And then there's a book called Glory Hunger mm. by a guy named J.R. Vassar. Both of those might be helpful yeah. in that area. Well, there you go. Lots of resources they can yeah. dig into and check out uh, to move along there and becoming more like yeah. Christ. Uh, the second question that came in is, you talked about that first point just a second ago, that conformity feeds on a need for approval. And you asked two really good questions. You said, whose blessing uh, do you want or need? And then who do you become when you're seeking that blessing? And kind of the question that came in was, you know, uh, you listed out sometimes that person you're seeking from approval could be a parent or a spouse or a boss. And these are people that you're in close proximity to. So you can't really... You know, sometimes the Bible would say if you're being caused to sin to flee. Well, sure. in this case, yeah, that's can't really flee do. my spouse. Yeah. So practically, do you have anything to help us address this for these people who are in close proximity to us in terms yeah. of, you know, not seeking their approval? Yeah, I would say that, you know, there's a difference, especially in marriage, there has to be a difference between conforming and compromising. Compromising has to be a part of every marriage where where two people are saying, you know what, there are ways that I need to change in order to be better for, for my marriage. Mm. And that's a healthy thing to say like, you know what, we are both sinful people, we are both stubborn and selfish people because we are human beings, mm -hmm. which is going to require me to change. And Jesus is constantly changing us to be more like him. And so part of that will be compromising in our marriage and not just doing it for the other person's approval, but so that God will be glorified through your marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, if you find yourself in an unhealthy situation where you feel like your spouse is, is stubborn and unwavering and is, is demanding that you perform a certain way mm -hmm. to meet his or her needs, then, then that's when 
I would encourage marriage counseling, honestly, mm -hmm. to get a third party agent in the mix that can say, look, compromise is a part of every marriage mm -hmm. and it is healthy for you to look at other people's, each other's needs and say, hey, how can I flex to be more accommodating mm -hmm. so that our relationship is more healthy? But there are unhealthy times where, where you need a third party speaking in just saying, look, the, this type of change is not, is not healthy. Mm -hmm. That's specifically for marriage. And the same goes with a parent-child relationship where there is that compromise. You know, parents are going to lean towards control and uh, kids are going to lean towards not wanting to be controlled. And so there comes that compromise of mm -hmm. as a child gets older and enters adulthood, you know, sometimes the problems are more when kids are become adults mm -hmm. and parents don't want to let go of that yeah. control. And there needs to be that understanding that as they get older, there's that relinquishing of control. And, and as you get older, there's just that growing respect and, and honor for, for your parent. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the working world, it's that fine line of like, you're hired to do a specific job. And so you want to always pursue getting better at your craft. Mm -hmm. That's a part of glory, honoring the Lord mm -hmm. is pursuing the Lord, pursuing your work with excellence in order to honor the Lord. Mm -hmm. But there might be times where, you know, your boss or your coworkers are, are wanting you to, you know, compromise your standards or convictions that, that has to be off the table. Mm -hmm. And then there might just be that internal drive to say, I want to do this because I need my boss's approval. I need mm -hmm. this person to always, you know, affirm me. And that's, that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. you, you have to work away from that to mm -hmm. say, you know what, I'm ultimately working for the Lord. The, the Bible says to do your work as doing it for the Lord and not for man. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. Well, those all three of those are helpful. I was thinking about particularly that marriage piece. And if, if you're out there and you need a resource, uh, Dan Slagle, Beth Ellis here, at FaithBridge can reference you to a counselor or even possibly provide counseling from them if that's of use to you. So it's thanks great. for that. Um, and thanks for being here. We always enjoy having you yeah. here. It was a great two-part series. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for listening in to Postscript. We'll be back next week. It will be Easter Sunday. So we'll recap uh, our Life Begins Easter message. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.